Hare Krishna. I'll be speaking about Srinivas Acharya. Vancha Kalpatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Nama. I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord. They are just like desire trees who can fulfill the desires of everyone. And they are full of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. Gangadhar Bhattacharya, the father of Srinivas Acharya. Gangadhar Bhattacharya and his wife Lakshmi Priya were both great devotees of Nimai Pandit, that is Chaitanya's name, before he took sannyas. Once Gangadhar Bhattacharya set out from his village to meet the Lord at Mayapur. He planned to stop at a small village called Katwa, where his good friend Keshav Bharti lived. On the way, he saw thousands of people going in the same direction. Where are you all going? he asked. We are going to see Nimai Pandit in Katwa, they replied. Kangadhar Bhattacharya was overjoyed. Now he did not have to go all the way to Mayapur. His happiness increased even more when he heard that Nimai Pandit was staying at Keshav Bharti's hermitage, which was his very own destination. Upon coming to the village, he found that many of the people were crying. When asked the reason, they explained that their beloved Nimai was to be initiated by Keshav Bharti into the sannyas order of life. Knowing that sannyas meant giving up all the worldly comforts, Gangadhar Bhattacharya was overcome with sadness. Arriving in the village, Gangadhar Bhattacharya saw the barber shaving off the beautiful curly hair from Nimai Pandit's head. Everyone present was loudly crying and tears ran down the barber's cheeks. When the job was done, he cast the razor to the ground and vowed, I will never shave anybody's head again. Nimai Pandit's vow of giving up worldly connections was very painful for his devotees. They were very fond of Thya Nimai with his long black hair. Now they thought that he would disappear into the forest and they would never see him again. From that day, Nimai Pandit was known as Sri Krishna Chaitanya. This name was given to him by his sannyas guru Keshav Bharti. After Gangadhar Bhattacharya saw Nimai Pandit take sannyas, he danced around, running here and there, sometimes laughing, sometimes crying. Always he chanted, Krishna Chaitanya, Krishna Chaitanya. Returning to his village, everybody thought that he had gone mad and they called him Chaitanya Das. They knew he had gone mad in love of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Soon after, Bhattacharya's wife bore him a child. They named the boy Srinivas. He was a beautiful child and like Radharani, his skin was the colour of molten gold. He had all the symptoms of a Mahapurush, a great personality. His chest was broad and his arms reached to his knees. It is said that he was the embodiment of the energy of Lord Chaitanya, the incarnation of Gaura Shakti. He was raised very attentively by his loving parents. All the time he was told stories about the Lord and as he grew, his only interest was to meet him. Srinivas' father died when he was still very young. But when he was around 14 years old, he received permission from his mother to meet Lord Chaitanya at Jagannath Puri. On the way, he met some Brahmins coming from Jagannath Puri. Taking the opportunity, he asked one of them, how is Lord Chaitanya? 
the Brahmin, his eyes full of sorrow, broke the terrible news. The Lord has passed from this mortal world. So shocked was Srinivas that he immediately fainted. The Brahmins could understand that he was a great devotee of the Lord, so they treated him with great care and respect. Upon waking, Srinivas thought that since the Lord was now gone, he would never be able to fulfill his greatest desire, which was to see him. He thought it useless to live any longer. He wanted to die. Collecting some wood, he made a huge fire and stepped forward to enter it. At that very moment, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityanand Prabhu appeared to him in a vision and stopped him. They assured the boy, Do not worry, because we will be with you, even though we are no longer visible to ordinary eyes. Furthermore, all the devotees in Jagannath Puri are waiting for you. Go there and take their guidance. Srinivas's desire to see the Lord was now fulfilled. So, with a heart filled with joy, he dutifully left for Jagannath Puri. Upon arriving in Jagannath Puri, Srinivas met Gadhadhar Pandit in the temple of Sri Gopinath. Gadhadhar Pandit was very famous because he could recite the Srimad Bhagavatam in many beautiful melodies, which Lord Chaitanya used to listen to with great pleasure. Knowing this, Srinivas was eager to learn the Srimad Bhagavatam from him, but Gadhadhar explained, Since the Lord has left this mortal world, I can no longer do anything. He missed the Lord Chaitanya so much that he was always crying and lamenting. But being merciful, he gave his own copy of Srimad Bhagavatam to Srinivas. It was handwritten on palm leaves and some of the ink had washed away. Kadhadar told Srinivas, The Lord and myself cried tears of ecstasy when we read the holy scriptures and these tears have washed away some of the text. You should go to Bengal and secure a new copy of the book. Before Srinivas left, he met many of the Lord's associates who were still living in Jagannath Puri. They were all very kind and blessed the boy. Srinivas hurried to Bengal to pick up the Srimad Bhagavatam. He hastened back to Jagannath Puri. He so he could take the lessons in the study of the great scriptures. Unfortunately, upon arriving back, he heard that the news that Gadhadhar Pandit had passed away. But being merciful, he gave his own copy of Srimad Bhagavatam to Srinivas. Srinivas was devastated but realized that the Gadhadhar Pandit had sent him away on purpose. Gadhadhar Pandit knew that he would soon leave this world and it would have been too much for his heart to bear if Srinivas, whom he loved so dearly, was with him at that time. Soon after this, Gadhadhar, appearing in a vision, told Srinivas, Do not fear. I will always be there with you. It is the Lord's desire that you go to Vrindavan to study under Srila Rup Goswami and Srila Sanatan Goswami. They are waiting for you and the Lord has personally instructed them to train you. Gadadhar urged him to hurry because time was short. Even though Gadadhar Pandit had clearly told the boy to hurry to Vrindavan, Srinivas first went to Bengal to visit some of the closest surviving friends of the Lord. Happy to meet him, they all bestowed their blessings. He then hurried on to Vrindavan but arrived too late. Shortly before reaching Vrindavan, he heard that Sanatan Goswami had passed away four months ago. 
when he arrived in Mathura, just outside of Vrindavan, he found that Rup Goswami had also left this world only three days earlier. The boy fell to the ground like a madman. It seemed to him that there were just too many obstacles. Whatever he did, everything was a failure. At that moment, Srinivas simply wanted to die. But just then, Rup Goswami and Sanatan Goswami appeared to him in a vision and instructed him, Go to Vrindavan and take shelter of Gopal Bhat Goswami and Jeev Goswami. At the temple of Govindji, Srinivas was warmly greeted by Jeev Goswami. They went to the temple of Damodhar where Srinivas Acharya was introduced to Gopal Bhat Goswami. The two Goswamis were very pleased that Srinivas had finally come. Srinivas was duly initiated by Gopal Bhat Goswami, who sent him to Jeev Goswami to study Srimad Bhagavatam. While there, he met Narottam Das Thakur and Shamanand Pandit and they became the very best of friends. These three students of Jeev Goswami were very learned, obedient and humble. So they were given a very special and important mission. Jeev Goswami instructed them, take all these books written by the Goswamis of Rindavan to Bengal so that the devotees there can copy and study them. The priceless books were put very carefully into a very beautiful wooden chest and secured on a bullock cart that was guarded by ten strong soldiers. The journey was long and treacherous through jungles full of murderers, bandits and prowling beasts. Nevertheless, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, everything went well until they came to the border of Bengal. In a city nearby called Van Vishnupur, there lived a king named Bhirhambir. He was a great plunderer and employed a whole team of bandits. He also regularly consulted an expert astrologer who could calculate how much money travellers carried. When the astrologer had done his calculations, the king would order his bandits to go and rob the more wealthy travellers. In this way, King Bhirambir enjoyed a life or luxury. As Srinivas and his companions entered the kingdom, the royal astrologer concluded that they were carrying wealth so priceless that it could not be calculated in any material way. King Bhirambir was overjoyed at the prospects thinking that with such vast riches, his pleasure would expand unlimitedly. The king ordered his most stealthy robbers, go there tonight, and when the travellers are fast asleep, steal away their priceless wealth. They did as was told. When the thieves successfully returned to the palace carrying the beautiful wooden box, the king could hardly wait to open it. But seeing it only full of books, the king was very disappointed. He had eagerly expected to find gold, jewels and precious stones, not just books. But when King Bhirambir touched the books and looked at the beautiful handwriting of Rup Goswami, he became very thoughtful. He understood that the books were very special and that by stealing them, he had made a great mistake. Meanwhile, when the great-minded devotees woke up, they discovered to their horror that the books were all missing. Srinivas cried out, Where are the books? Who has stolen them? Oh no! What are we going to do? We have been entrusted with all the priceless books written by Goswamis of Vrindavan. 
and have failed to protect them properly. After frantically searching, Srinivas begged his companions, Shamanand, Narottam, please go to Bengal and Orissa and preach the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu while I continue the search myself. My dear friends, I am the eldest amongst us. Therefore, it is my personal responsibility to find the books. In the days that followed, Srinivas stayed at the house of a Brahmin called Krishna Balabha. They became good friends and Srinivas told him about the missing books. Krishna revealed, It is possible that the king has been involved in the theft. Since you cannot go directly and ask him, here is a better plan. Krishna Balabha explained, King Bhirambir, although a great bandit, is very fond of hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. Let's go to the palace where you can speak on the Srimad Bhagavatam for the king's pleasure. In this way, you can meet the king personally, face to face. Following the agreed plan, Srinivas and the Brahmin made their way to the court of King Bhirambir. They sat and listened to the court pandit, Vyas Acharya, speak on Srimad Bhagavatam. His explanations were bogus. After some time, Srinivas could tolerate it no longer and challenged, Excuse me, sir, but what you say is not true. Your words do not reflect the teachings of the great masters of Srimad Bhagavatam. Upon hearing this, Vyas Acharya felt very offended and suggested, If you think that you can do better, why don't you come here and explain this verse? This, ex this was exactly what Srinivas had been waiting for. With the permission of the king, he gladly accepted this offer and took a seat before the king. Srinivas Acharya presented the philosophy of Lord Chaitanya as he had learnt it from Jeev Goswami. He recited the Srimad Bhagavatam so beautifully that everyone present became completely spellbound. They had never before heard such a clear presentation of the meaning of the verses. They absolutely loved it. The king was so moved by the speech that he fell down at the lotus feet of Srinivas and begged to become his servant. Seizing this opportunity, Srinivas asked the king for help. He explained, I have been travelling with the books written by the Goswamis of Rindavan, but now the books have been stolen. With a sad voice, he continued, I am too ashamed to go back to my spiritual master without these books. The king was embarrassed. Now he understood whose books he had stolen. Escorting Srinivas to his treasury, he showed him the wooden chest containing the books. Srinivas Acharya was overjoyed when he saw the lost books. He asked the king to go and get ingredients for worship such as water, incense, a flower and a fan. When the king brought them, he watched while Srinivas performed the Aarti ceremony. In this traditional ceremony, Srinivas offered the ingredients of worship to the holy books. This meeting with the pure devotees of the Lord changed the king's lifestyle completely. He became a Vaishnava. Srinivas initiated the king as his disciple and happily continued his journey to Bengal. There he delivered the books to the Vaishnavas, who copied and studied them with great enthusiasm. Sometime later, Srinivas returned home to live in his family's house. Srinivas's mother wanted him to marry. To fulfill her desires, he married twice. One wife was called Ishwari and the other Gaurapriya. They bore him several children, empowered devotees who later took disciples themselves. 
in particular, his daughter Hemlata Thakurani became famous as a wonderful preacher and accepted many hundreds of disciples, both men and women. It is not known where, when or how Srinivas passed away. Nevertheless, his life can give devotees so much inspiration by showing us the faith power and determination of a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya. His tomb is in the Bhira Samira Samadhi's area in Vrindavan and in Krishna Leela he serves as Mani Manjri. Srinivas Acharya Ki Jai. Thank you. Hare Krishna.